So good morning or good night, depending where you are, and welcome to another anniversary album review of The Shield Doing a Couch. And I, again, I'm joined by JC Rock and Metal Reviews. And before we start the review, I want to congratulate JC on hitting the 1K uh, subscriber. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot. It took about, uh, a little over almost two years, but yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I'm, I'm, I just started in December, so it's, I think it's a, it's patience, you know, like it's, it doesn't happen overnight and you just got to keep working at it. No, it's not something you got to, you got to work towards. But. Yeah, but today we're here because we're going to discuss an album that is a classic and here I have it on vinyl. It's Appetite for Destruction by Guns and Roses and we're going to talk about our memories of the album when we first heard it our favorite tracks, how does it hold up 35 years later? So I'm going to have JC uh, start this up. Okay. Um, this is uh, maybe one of like, uh, you know, the most influential albums for me as far as music is concerned. The album was released in uh, 87 and I was, I guess I was 16 at the time. I think I probably got into it you know, maybe like a year later. So between the years of like 16 and 17. Before that time, I wasn't really into music a lot. I listened to like what was on MPB or what was popular. I didn't really listen to metal at all. You know, I watched, you know, I wasn't really into music. But once this came out, this really got me interested in like new bands, new music. And eventually it got me into metal. So, for example, when I was a senior in high school, I got my driver's license and we were allowed to uh, you know, drive to school. So I had the Guns N' Roses app that instruction on cassette and I used to listen to it going back and forth uh, to school. So that's why I listened to this album all the time. It was like this album and I listened to Def Leppard's uh, Hysteria. That was another one that was out at this time. And this Guns N' Roses album was the one that really got me interested in kind of like harder music because before that I've listened to like hard rock I've listened to ACDC before that and a little bit of Black Sabbath but it got me interested in exploring some new stuff so from here I went on to like Metallica's uh, Master of Puppets and after that I was pretty much really a metalhead after that you know I really got into you know heavier stuff you know Testament Anthrax and Slayer and all that this was um it's a really good album. I think it's one that a lot of people, you know, everyone likes it. I've never heard anyone saying anything negative about it. You know, whether you're a metal fan or not a metal fan, I think a lot of people, you know, like this album. A lot of my friends and family at that time were really into this band at the time. You know, it was really a, a big selling band. I think it was like the biggest selling debut ever. And, uh, for that reason, this is just a very influential album for me, and it was kind of like the my gateway into like heavy metal, just because it came out right at, at that like perfect time when I was just a teenager and getting into it. So that's so, it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. For for me, it, it was a little bit different because in 1987 I was like just turning 10, so I would listen to what my parents played on the radio. So uh, I got more into rock and metal at the beginning of the 90s. Uh, and the, so the first music that I heard from Guns N' Roses was actually a Use Your Illusion 1 and 2. Yes. So I heard them and I thought they were good. But I had a friend who was a metalhead said, like, if you like those one, listen to their first album. So I did. And that's when I listened to Appetite for Destruction. And I got to say that uh, this album uh, is my, it's still my favorite from them. Uh, even oh, though I started true. with Use Your Illusion 1 and 2, I think this is the most raw Guns N' Roses has sounded ever. It's a great debut album. And I think, like you said, I think it's one of the best-selling debut albums. So I really got into it. Uh, I really enjoyed uh, that it was different from oh, a lot of those other hair bands from the 80s. Like, they had more attitude, you know? They were... Yeah. They were. They had like an element of danger, if you will, yeah. uh, because uh, if you look at them and then you look at Poison, Poison looked like girls. <laughs> yeah. And there, there was nothing dangerous about it. But even though you know, look at these guys. They look like someone that people that you wouldn't want to mess with. And mm -hmm. 
Uh, so something, this cover, it's an iconic cover, but it actually wasn't the first cover here. Let's see, this is the original cover. Yeah. Actually, let, let me show you something because I, um, yes, back then course. I bought this uh, EP and this is the, the Japanese EP. Oh, it has nice. the same cover on it. And uh, it's pretty cool. This is a really, really uh, cool EP. It has It's So Evie, Shadow of Your Love, uh, an early version of Knocking on Heaven's Door, a whole lot of Rosie. So this is a uh, pretty cool, yeah. Yeah, I know it's and it's yeah, but obviously they settled with this cover, which is yeah. very iconic as well. You know, everyone knows this cover. Yeah, it's a great cover. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I I really like their attitude. I like their guitar playing. I thought the songs were well. So uh, I became a Guns N' Roses fan, uh, and uh, to this day, that this is my still appetite for destruction. I think, like you said, I I haven't heard anyone said anything negative about that album like uh i would have to search but i, I think even people that are not metal heads or don't like rock like songs from this album so yes. uh i think it's it's held up and that's why uh it's still a classic 35 years later yes yes it's, it's definitely it's just it has held up very well it's, it's just a really great album all the way through yeah, yeah all the way yeah. through it's a great album. So now let's let's go ahead and and talk about like uh, what are your you know your favorite tracks and why. Okay, um, I think my my favorite is the one that's like the most overplayed, but for some reason I just love the song "Sweet Child of Mine." I mean, with, I've heard it, I don't know, maybe over a thousand times in the past thirty five years, but I really love it, and it's just. Such a, a catchy song. It just has that really great uh, intro riff and just a really great melody. And, and Axel Rose's vocals, he does the high stuff. Then and towards the end, he does like the like lower vocals. Um, Sweet Child of Mine will always be one of my favorites. I really like the, um, you know, when I was a teenager, I liked, I liked this album because like it was kind of like very like edgy. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, they, they dropped a lot of like the F bombs like during the, <laughs> that was like the first time I ever heard anything like that. And I thought that was cool. So, for example, uh, songs like like My Michelle, that's that's one of my favorites, another one. And it's kind of hard to say pick favorites because it's pretty much picking the whole album. But My Michelle is one I like. Mr. Brownstone, really all great uh, riff in that one. Um, anything goes uh, you know that that one's a really that one's really raw and edgy the the lyrics are very like over like uh, sexualized but another good song probably my favorite out of the deep cuts rocket queen it's just oh, really i yeah. just love that song it, it just has a, those like two parts because like it has the first part of the song and then it kind of like, change almost like into a ballad it gets like really melodic i've always loved like that transition from like the first part of rocket queen to the second part yeah. of rocket queen yeah it's like a two-part song and i think yeah. it's an amazing album closer yeah and, and obviously if you've heard it uh, yeah it's it has the first rocking part then it and in the first rocking part you have uh the moaning of i think it was steven adler's uh uh, girlfriend at the time yeah uh, but apparently it, uh, that was Axel Rose with her and they put that on the record yeah. which I think it's it, the song is awesome but like it's a dick move <laughs> to do that <laughs> it is kind of messed up because I know I, I I saw some story about that or something online about how Steven Adler Every night he had to play it live, and he would like playing these like sound clips of that that part with the that sex part, and it is kind of messed up. But you know that's it kind of what was those. But you know it's 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 a part of the song, and and it goes with the song. But yeah, like you said, that song is I I it's an it's an amazing deep cut because it starts very rocking, and then it goes into a power ballad, but it doesn't feel awkward. Yeah, so the transition because. There's music nowadays that they can try to do transitions like that, but it doesn't work. But with Rocket Queen, yeah, it's amazing, and I think it's one of the most underrated Guns N' Roses song. Oh, definitely. Uh, yeah. It's it's such a great song. I have to agree with you. Out of the deep cuts, I think that uh, not not only is it an amazing album closer, but uh, it's a song that that really it, 
it really was ahead of its time, I think, yes. when, when they released it. So, yeah, I, I would agree with you there. And like uh, like you said, yeah, this is this is almost like a uh, like a greatest hits without being a greatest hits. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, if you will. So, uh, so yeah, let me talk about the songs that uh, that I love. Like, of course, I the first song that I heard was "Welcome to the Jungle," and you know that was played on MTV, and uh, it's a great song still. Uh, I like the attitude. It feel it reeks of danger, yeah. and it's that's something that this album has. It has a great opener and an amazing finisher with yeah. Rocket Queen. Uh, but yeah, I love uh, I love Paradise City, uh, uh, Sweet Child of Mine. Yeah, it's a great ballad, and that that guitar lick, that doo -doo 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 -doo, you know, it's it's iconic. It stays in your mind. It's been played in so many movies, so many shows. But yeah. Uh, other songs that uh, maybe I love that uh, we haven't mentioned. I think it's so easy. It's really good. Yeah. Uh, Night Train, uh, Mr. Brownstone. I think the uh, the one that I like the least and I really like is uh, I it would say Think About You or You're Crazy. Those are the my two least favorites from the album uh, in an album that has no weak tracks. Uh, yeah, I don't think it has any weak tracks. If I had to pick one, my weakest would be Paradise City. I think that one kind of like, you know, it's I've heard it a lot and it does have that sense of being, okay, I've kind of heard it like too much. I don't really get that with Sweet Child of Mine. I would just, you know, I, I like it every time I listen to it. But Paradise City was the one that kind of feel a little overplayed for me. That would be my one weakest song but in in an album that's like almost a perfect album if i would say like almost every song was like a 10 you know that would be like maybe like an eight and a half but you know but still that that would be my weakest yeah, yeah no yeah uh but yeah it, like you said it has no weak tracks yeah uh so now let's let's say uh 35 years later how it's held up i think it's, it's gonna be an easy discussion but yeah oh it, 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 it's definitely held up you know, uh, like I was saying before we start recording, I I listened to it this morning. I usually, when we do these things, I usually like might like take notes or anything. But this, for this album, I didn't really need to, you know, take any notes or write down anything because I just like knew this album very well. And just listening to it again just kind of like brought me back to you know when I first listened to it, like being like a teenager. And that's kind of one thing I love about music is that when you have an album that you loved when you were younger and you listen to it again, it kind of brings you back. And it's just, it's a really good album. The, the production is really good. You know, all the instruments are really great. Uh, you know, that has a really great like bass guitar sound, uh, Slash, he, he's just a really great guitar player. So his guitar playing is really good. It's, it's like distorted enough, but it's like not too heavy. It has, a, you know, that like nice, like dirty sound. and. I think they're all like talented musicians. You know, the, the problem was when they did those Illusion albums, they started like bringing in more like keyboards and piano. I think that kind of changed their sound a little bit, but that's, I won't get into that too much. But I think on this album, it just has those like that, like raw rock sound. And that's why I love that. So I think it did hold up. Yeah. And, and Axel Rose sounds great on this album, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, he, he really knows how to, when he spits out those lyrics yeah. uh, angry or like you can really feel them like the way he sings is really uh, great and uh, did you ever get to see Guns N' Roses back in the day? No, that's one of the bands I've never seen live so and I know they do uh, they do still tour maybe I will see them I know they are coming uh, to Mexico City uh, at the end of this year they're pretty big in, in where I live, so yeah, yeah. Maybe if I do get a chance to see them, I will. But yeah, yeah, I saw them uh, with the Chinese Democracy Tour, but there, it was it was like Axel Rose and Friends, you know. It, it wasn't with Slash, so it was good. Yeah. But it, I, I would love to see with the original band members. Uh, if I had to go back in time, I would go to 1987 and see them like playing at the Troubadour and. Yeah, and like yeah, catching like them like shows. really young because I think there would have been some amazing shows. And even though you know Axel Rose has some uh, negative stuff in his past, you know he, he's not the 
squeaky clean of people like but that was their image you know like yeah. back in the days I, I don't know if you remember I, they had a time where the he and Vince Neil uh, apparently were going to fight oh yeah I, I think I remember that yeah yeah they should do that now <laughs> <laughs> I, I think Axel's going to win <laughs> but, yeah no with Vince Neil yeah yeah, but, but that's I, another topic. I, I think the Guns N' Roses, they like they probably like should have been like one, one of the biggest bands ever. But in the end, they're one of those bands that they, they have this one great album, this one after that for destruction. The next two albums were good, but it was too much filler. Like so those use your illusion albums that could have made one album. And yeah. I think if, if like Axel Rose kept it together, they could have just been putting out these uh, killer albums one after the other, but they just... Yeah, it's, it's a shame because yeah. they were huge for just a short while of time, but they imploded. Uh, yeah. Like, uh, what would have been? Because I think it would have been, like, great getting more Guns N' Roses album, but, yeah. But that's what happened. But, yeah, 35... We're celebrating 35 years of Appetite for Destruction and 35 years later it's still as vital as it was when it came out back in july 21st of 1987. Yes. so uh we want to hear from you uh what did you think about appetite for destruction uh is it your favorite guns and roses album uh what are your favorite tracks comments we want to know uh and if you like rankings and a lot of like music knowledge Check out JC's rock and metal reviews and subscribe. Uh, he's uh, let's get him to 2K now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Hit, and uh, and up next we'll have uh, and we're gonna do another collaboration video with uh, JC and the Green Man, and we're going to be discussing the importance of music, mainly metal, on um, movies, TVs and video games so that will come sometime next uh in a few like you know a week and a half so watch out for that so jc again thank you for taking thank the you. time to collaborate with me and and revisiting this classic album okay thank you yeah, yeah so until next time this is hector the shield on the couch yeah. and jc rock and metal reviews and we'll see you pretty soon rock on <laughs>